guys, let's do something different today. So lately I've been getting lots of uh, students asking me, especially about the flamenco harmony. And they, they say things like, um, you know, I, I've heard that the flamenco harmony is, is simple. Like uh, harmonically speaking, the flamenco harmony is, is simple. But when I hear, you know, pieces of Paco or when I see different palos and stuff like that, the styles in flamenco, it's just, it's so confusing. It's so complicating with all the different fingerings and stretching and all this kind of thing. And how come people say flamenco harmony is, is simple yet it's, it looks so complicated? And this is what I want to talk about today specifically. I want to cover this topic and I really want to try my best to make it simple for you guys because it actually is true. The flamenco harmony is actually relatively very simple compared to jazz or, or you know other styles it's just another world right i think if you've seen the documentary of paco the old one uh, black and white uh, you've seen uh, you've heard the phrase of paco where where he's like i think he was smoking or something and then he puts the cigarette down it's like flamenco is really simple the 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 chords we use in flamenco it's all based on the cadence you know and he's like we have la sol fa mi and then when you put the rhythm, it becomes more complicated. And he's saying it so, you know, very calmly like that. And I love that. And that's specifically what I want to focus on today. I want to elaborate a little bit more on this and what he meant by that. Uh, I want to try to make it as simple as possible. So if we do, uh, if we do the, the cadence, A, G, F, D, like this, we have these four chords. Uh, I want to focus on the palos that are based on the Phrygian dominant. And that means the ones that resolve on this flamenco sounding chord, right? The E frigid. So let's let's focus on this today only. Now, what can we do with these four chords? Because the flamenco is not like that. This is not this this is not the flamenco that you are looking for here, right? So let's try to expand on it more and see when we put the rhythm, when we change uh, palos, how, how what's going to happen right there. If we add the dominants to each of those four chords, we can unlock an extra four, kind of. Here we have the A minor. What's the dominant of A minor? We have the E7 and then A minor. Okay, so now we have this extra chord, which is the E7. Let's check what's the dominant of G. We have it's a D7, like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. Anyway, so D7 going to G. Now we have an extra chord as well. Dominant of F, we have the C7, and then we go to F. Now here I like to always and this is very common in flamenco. Before you resolve uh, on the last chord, which is the E, it's very nice to add this tension by adding the seventh. And then you go and resolve. So now we have like this extra sort of four chords. E7, D7, C7, F7, then you close. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, uh, eight. <laughs> Just ten. Okay. So we have uh, these. Now we have like a little bit more chords. Now we have like eight, uh, sort of in a way. Because I, I'm saying in a way because the F or F seven is really we're in the same chord, but we're just changing well, the modifying it a little bit and making it a seven. Or also the E7, we are also playing at the end, we're playing an E flat 9 when we do like this. But in the beginning we're doing an E7. So this is technically the same chord but modified in a different way. So if we think about it, we really have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, really. The 7, 8, I'm referring to the E7 and the F7, just modifying it, right? And that's specifically what I want to elaborate on more today. Like the A, G, F, E that Paco showed and putting rhythm on that and, you know, playing different palos and stuff like that on these chords. But the twist today is I'm going to play them on the same key so that you can see really how simple it is if you play everything on the same key. You'll understand what he really meant and how, how harmonically speaking, it's actually very simple. Now let's get down to business and use those chords and show you how if we stay in the same key and show, show you a different variety of palos that are based on the Phrygian dominant, meaning the last chord will be here, the tonic, how simple it would look actually. So I'm going to start with tangos because tangos is very relatively simple. And again, if you hear tangos, you... You 
hear it usually like this. But what if we're playing on the normal, the, the same key that we were explaining this before? Well, that would be. Notice we are also changing between that flat nine and seven, depending on the you know where you're playing the chord. <laughs> can close on the seven if you want. That's why I wanted to clarify that it can be the same chord. We're just modifying it a little bit and all that. that that's mostly how the tangos would sound if you were to play it on on the E Phrygian dominant, and that is the tango por arriba they call it because the bass uh, the the tonic is on the sixth string. So. For example, if you were to play a falsetta of tangos, one very common one, if you're playing on the traditional sound, like this, we change that to the to that cadence that we were talking about, A, G, F, E, and it sounds... We have A minor, we have G, and then F. G, F. Notice we have the F7 even at the end. Remember we said we can add the tension. And here, we have the A minor, the dominant of A minor we said was the E7, so. Here we don't have to, we can if you want, really. And then G. The same chords. My point is that it's the same chords, right? It's the same A, G, F, E, even if we add the dominance, even if we add the seventh, we're resolving on the same chord, everything like that. Now let's go for the second one, like the bulerias, for example. The bulerias usually... The harmony of the bulerias, let's take it the same thing that I just did, but on the E, and that translates to... Here we have, starting from E, and then F, G, F, G. And then we are closing on E. So again, within the same harmony of A, G, F, E, but now the order has changed from E, F, G, F, E. Obviously, the compass, we are not even close to describing, like, compass is another thing. So the compass is uh, changed to 12, it's more fast and all that. But that's not what I want to focus on today. Only specifically the chords, how they are all the same at the moment, and how the order is changing. Right? The order now became again A, F, G, F, E, alongside the compass, which makes the biggest difference, I think, and the key change. So there's a section in Al Muraima where Paco goes, for example, no. This one. If you were to play that same melody on that A, G, F, E, key, well, it will sound like this. Now, what do we have right now? for example where you can do the same the same chords on a different key everything changes because the open strings are now in different locations of the scale and they can open a completely different sounds and and possibilities unlocks new sounding chords and we'll get to that in a moment when we play more the open uh, like like taranta like minera and stuff like that so that's the bulerias example again on e without changing anything 
let's take fandangos for example fandangos is already on that key which is the e it's basically written like this and if we do the chords um we have the order being <laughs> Is that we're doing the same chords which is the A G F E adding the dominance with, when you do for example two different positions of E and you get in the beginning E7 E7 A you see it and you're like what the hell is ha happening but one this is just an E E7 and going to A D7 G Rinse and repeat. Or E A D G C F F E. And that's it. E A D G C F 7. In Fandangos, it would be actually more interesting to take the chords that we usually do on the E Phrygian mode and take it to another key. Uh, just for the sake of experiment, check this out. So if you're meant to play Fandangos on C sharp minor and you get, for example, <laughs> Now you have a fandango that's very, very unique, but anyway, we are doing the opposite for this video, okay? So we're sticking in this key. Fandangos, again, the same chords, the same, nothing is outside the ones that we mentioned in the beginning, right? We have the E, A, G, F, E, and the dominance D7, C7, F7, that's all. Let's go to Seguirias, okay? Before we move to another palo, just to be very, uh, again, point one more time that how important the compass change is. With all the right hand stuff, with all the techniques that are different in every key, you're going to see that this is a a whole different piece what are you doing right now and that's in a way true because the compass is different now we are doing in 12 but counting it in six we have the one two three four five six one two three four five six one and everything changes when you do a different rhythm like that so leave the compass aside and only look at the harmony right now very important that you understand how the harmony is actually actually simple let's go to um what did we say? Sigirias. For example, Sigirias, if you were to play on the normal traditional key. Take it to E. So this is Serrana, which is actually a style also. It's like the Sigrias rhythm, but you're playing it on the Por Arriba with a whole completely different kind of letter and all that. The idea again, let's pretend this is just Sigrias right now. And we are doing the chords are just F and E. A, E, F, E. Very simple, really. If you break it down, you have the A, G, F. the rhythm
are just doing the same thing. Different rhythm, different key every time. That makes things more compli complicated and it might seem like every time it's like this whole new world. It is, but it's not. Let's take a different one. Let's take let's take one of the most beautiful ones and that's Taranta. When you play Taranta, you are hearing that's the frigid mode of the Taranta. Like this. What's unique about the Taranta simply is the key you're playing it on. If you take the same chords that you're playing on Taranta and you were to play it on the Phrygian, first of all, it's not possible, but what you really be, have to be do, for example, be like this, something like that, right? Let's, let's take chords of Taranta, for example, cadence. difficult to show how it would sound on the A minor key because the unique thing about the Taranta is its location it's in the open strings if I try to do it on the normal A minor key this chord would be like this now we we have the open string that gives us this note in the Taranta key so it's like doing so technically really it's like this but in a much much easier way without having to do all these gymnastics with the fingers <laughs> to get the same chord or let's say let's take it again simple no complexity okay just the same notes so it's like doing something like like this see how difficult it would be to do it on the E because we don't have the chord we don't have the open strings available to us to give us that chord while when you play on the F sharp you have it right there chords are the same really they are the same we have cadence being so okay let's pretend that there's a couple on where my finger is is a couple okay and we're playing Taranta still and we do the same chords basically are like this open the, the capo now and then you have now you have the open strings giving you that option to for more beauty you know that's the beautiful thing about guitar every key has its own you know world and in Taranta is one of the most beautiful ones and that's why Vicente especially likes to play a lot on this key and another like so many of course but Taranta is very very common to be used because of its open strings okay the core is the same a g f e but transposed into the f sharp and that's it it's, it's again more difficult to show you with the e because it's really it's not really that possible but okay so just moving on because that's very difficult now i, I want to be clear all the open uh, all the free, like for example, Granaina, Rondenia, Taranta, Minera, all of these palos are relying a lot on the key that you're playing them in using those available open strings that we didn't have in the normal A minor key. All of them. Let's go two frets up and take Minera. Minera is like this. Now here, the beauty in Minera is that we have the A and that gives that resonance in between this one. Again, we are using the open strings for, to our advantage. The core is the same. Let's go back and do the cadence in Minera. Would be if you like this usually. See the open strings. Open strings. And then we have the open strings here as well. Every single chord has its beauty in its open string if you were to do it in the a minor it would be almost it look it would sound great in the a in as an a minor a minor right but not as great if you want to replicate you just have to go to that key if you want to play the same things but a minor would be like this simple 
and then we play like a seventh sharp 11 and we are adding also so it's like but that note is open first and the typical that one we can do it maybe well, how, well something like like this because now we have this dissonance we are looking for but here right so it's it's more you know finger gymnastics to get that kind of somewhat similar sound to what we're playing but here it's more easy we're still doing things here but still it's, it's less complex and uh, easier in general or like this. again so this for example these are the same chords played on the different key and opens up and unlocks for us new sounds because of the open strings basically what's happening in the minera same thing if you continue and move on to granaina and then we have the e d c and b what are the unique things of granaina well my personal favorite is the d On the A minor, we have to start on A minor. Oh, so technically we're here, like this, and we're doing something like that, right? Which is insane to do it here. So you just again back to G F E. It's very limited to show you again because of the limitations we have uh, in corresponding to the to the open strings that we are getting when changing keys. It's very hard to show you on A minor to get that same sound, right? But Technically, that's it. A, G, F, E. Um, I can get you something similar to, for example, like this when you're playing the granaina here. But transposing all the way to the E, you get these sounds, and so on. So the chords are the same. We have the A, G, F, E, but played on a different position. And you can just go on and on and on. They have the rondenia, the same thing. Rondenia, it goes even a step further and just change tunings all the way. You have the sixth drop, drop D, and third string to F sharp. And you're also doing basically the cadence, but but on C sharp here. And you're you are doing this whole thing as well with the rondenia. The core, again, is the same. A, G, F, E, done in a different key. And different open strings, change tunings even with rondenia. Uh, I don't know. Um, the most basic ones, like okay, you have also the solea for Bulleri. Oh, solea, we didn't even say the solea, but solea has an exception, and that's why people like it. And I'll tell you why right now. And it's because it breaks the rule a little bit, and it adds a C major chord. When you're playing solea, you have the F, you have C, and that's not well. That we said C7 before. It was like a dominant of F, but not C major. And the, the reason why Solea sounds really, really beautiful, in my opinion, is because of that sudden major chord. You have the F again. F is inside the chords we talked about. A, G, F, E, F. But here as F major 7. Very beautiful. And then you have the C. And then you have F, E. Like this. So you have... play A instead of F in the beginning. You can do A minor, C, F, E, or F7, F major 7, sorry, and then C, F, you get the point. Let's go A minor, C, F, A, or you can do it directly on E, so now we have E and F and then C. We are still inside the same things, but ex with the exception of adding that C major chord. And that's why I think most people like Solea a lot. Because of that C major chord, it gives you that sudden relief when you put this C, when you're doing... See how that it opens directly? Before 
good result all the way back to F and E. So that Solea chord, the, this, the order of the chords in Solea are very, very beautiful and makes people really like it even more. And this, the compass, obviously. So again, I want to be clear, I didn't touch anything on the compass today, but obviously adding the compass factor and adding the speed, the different key. So you're playing, for example, back to the original, uh, let's say, Bulerias, you can have so many different keys. So this is this idea of playing the same things in different keys has nothing to do with flamenco necessarily. It has to do with you understanding the guitar and understanding the fretboard better. You don't need to learn flamenco in order to do all these things in their proper keys and everything. You just need to know the guitar. If you were to play in A or maybe you here or here or here, you just need to know the guitar. What are the chords that you can play? Or you have different... Every key has its own thing. Every key has its own world. And that's how you get the uniqueness, I can, I can say, of each palo. It's really, really, honestly simple. If you just take the chord, and you see that the, the chords are the same, flamenco cadence, A, G, F, E. Now transpose all these chords, A, G, F, E, and put them in other keys and analyze how you can use all these four chords in other keys, where the position goes in every key, and then add the rhythm factor, and then add the technique. So you have in fandangos, you can, you can do like this. simple okay that's great now you understand the rhythm now you understand the, the structure of the chords the, the order but you do have to learn also the technique or you do adding the golpe in the right location adding the abanico in the right location all these things will be what makes flamenco more intimidating when you see it especially if you are coming from another genre let's say of music and you're seeing flamenco and you see like um like this is crazy what are they doing you know and yeah we all feel the same actually but you just get to analyze one thing at the time point by point and you'll see that it's actually it's easier than than it looks to a certain degree i say that with a sigh because can be very difficult also very frustrating of course to practice all these techniques and make sure that every beat is there and you're not missing any beat is a very very difficult uh, journey but like i said the palos that are based on the frigid mode the core is always the same agfe focus on that Rewatch if you want every section every palo that i did very very little i did like that and really make it simpler for yourself Think of it in this simple way, and then add the technique, then add the key changes, learn the guitar better. That's the right way, the right approach, I think. So I hope this helps a little bit. I don't want to make it like a huge, huge long video, so I'll stop right here. I hope this helps you in any way again, and uh, let me know what you think down. Get this video going, put the like, all this kind of things, I don't know. And I'll see you next time.
Thank you.